So this video marks one year of whiskey whereabouts. I'm Tim, and today I've got a limited release Buna Haben. It is 50% ABV, and it costs about as much as the 12 year. So how limited is it, and where can you find it? And most importantly, how good is it? We're gonna find out right now. My whiskey journey has taken me to Scotland and back. I've explored whiskey education, tastings, and distilleries from Isla to Speyside. And now my journey continues here, with you on Whiskey Whereabouts. So while this whiskey finishes breathing, I just want to say thank you for watching the channel, subscribing, and supporting the channel in any way uh, that you have over the past year. We've got a lot more coming uh, in year two. So to commemorate this anniversary, I decided to sort of pull down off the shelf open one of the bottles that I still hadn't gotten to yet from my time in Scotland. And this time it's a travel retail exclusive Buna Hop. It's called the Ancladoc. And I purchased this at the sort of duty-free shop in Edinburgh uh, at the airport. Um, which is where you find these travel retail exclusive bottlings. They're, 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 they're limited release bottlings that the distillers make just to put in those shops um, along with um, the, the normal sort of releases that you're getting uh, uh, ostensibly at a discounted price. And travel retail bottlings are very, very hit or miss. And um, especially when you have one like this one, it's a non-age statement whiskey. But the other specs are pretty impressive. It's a 50% whiskey. Non-chill filter, no color added. It's 100% uh, sherry matured. And the other thing about this whiskey, which I paid less than $70 after the conversion for, which is very in the ballpark with the 12 year, is that this bottle is big. It's a one liter bottle. You're getting lots of uh, bonus whiskey here in terms of the content. So we have a potential for a good value if the whiskey's any good. So I'm gonna go in on the nose here, neat on this whiskey. Yeah, it's pretty sherry. Brown sugar, a little bit of that cinnamon, a little bit of that baking spice, some raisin. Things we expect from a sherry matured whiskey. The other element here is fruity, um, not one I think of as, as a sherry fruit, more of a berry fruit. Yeah, kind of dark, not really tart. Sort of crisper than that sort of sticky sweet sherry. It's a little bit of a toffee, bit of ginger. When I know the neck pour of this whiskey, when I opened the bottle um, a little less than a week ago, there was another element here. Very sharp, very metallic element. It's a little dominating and I wasn't really pleased with it. And I'm getting that sort of quality much, much, much lower in the mix now. Much more subdued and balanced. It's much improved with some air here. It's also a, a sort of a toasty sort of quality. It's an unpeated Buna Haven, but you get sometimes that sort of toasty kind of warm quality and I'm getting that here, but the whole thing is a little bit crisper and less, less so sharply metallic than it was uh, at the first pour. Okay, so let's go into the palette neat. Yeah, it's sweet. It's a nice sort of chocolatey sweet on the palate, and then there is that sort of sherry, stickier kind of brown sugar, a little caramel almost in the sort of sweetness. That red berry runs through now. It's like kind of sort of raspberry and chocolate, and there's a, a little, there's a little bit of oaky uh, to it. Uh, it's not overwhelmingly bitter. Uh, there's also sort of a kind of a chewy kind of nuttiness um, to it. It's, it's, it's pretty nice. There is a tinge of that sort of brassy element to it, that metallic. Again, so much more balanced now. In less than a week of being open, it has really sort of sort of mellowed. That, that, that note was really out of balance um, on that first sort of early pour of the whiskey. It needed a little time uh, to, to sort of breathe and mellow that out. Okay, so let's go back to the finish neat now. So the first wave of sort of finish is, is sweet. It's that berry, a little bit of that sort of brown sugar, kind of cherry sweet is there, but there's a big presence here of sort of wood, sort of oak, and I would say it's medium, but the, the sweet elements are almost short to medium. So I would say what stays with you is that sort of wood kind of and bitter. So we got a 50% whiskey here and I wanna see what happens. I've got a little note that uh, a little out of balance. Let's see what the water is going to do here to help us out or not. So now going in with the water on the nose. Yeah, and that sweet has kind of sort of melted together. It's almost has a marshmallow quality now. There's that sort of brassy undercurrent, but it's pretty subtle and it's kind of intertwined with a little bit of the wood quality. The sherry sweet is raisin, but it's really that berry quality that's really on top now. 
it's pretty nice. Yeah, the chocolate, the berry, it's a little peppery. On the palate, there's still some of that oak, that wood, but it's, it's calmed down a bit. The finish was the part that I was the least satisfied with the first time through. Let's see with the water. Yeah, so that sort of oak, that's kind of calmed down now, that wood. Now I think I've got a little bit more balance on the finish. I don't think there's as much of the brightness of the sort of fruit element, but there is the sweet, there's a sherry sweet. You're left with a little bit of that bitter, but it is balanced out a little bit more. It's a little bit sweet, it's a little bit nutty, and it's a little bit more inviting. A little less with that sort of, sort of one sharp sort of bitter note out of tune. Uh, on the finish with the water, which has helped it out a little bit here, uh, shaving off that sort of rough edge. So where does it leave us? This is a bottle that isn't available on every shelf. Like I said at the beginning, it's a travel exclusive bottle that was pretty reasonably priced at retail. Now you may see this out around in other places at an inflated price, but I paid less than $70 for my bottle. It's in, you know, proximity to the price of the 12 year that we all sort of know and love. Um, you're getting higher ABV, you're getting more whiskey, you're getting, you know, a liter of whiskey here. So it's definitely a potential value. It's not a bad whiskey at all. Uh, it's not as good as a 12 year. Um, there is a couple of those elements that, that are a little sharp, that, that sort of metallic, that, that sort of, sort of bitter, uh, wood, a little out of balance, but it is, you know, a decently presented, no age statement, but otherwise, well-presented Sherry Matured Bunnehaven. Uh, it's pretty solid at this price point. So the opposite, you know, presentation from the Arbeg uh, Heavy Vapors, a committee release I reviewed. I'll put it up here if you uh, missed it not too long ago. Uh, so a different variant. It's giving you kind of a different angle on a whiskey that we really know and appreciate, which is, which is fun and, and instructive to have a, a different presentation to compare and pick apart. But that whiskey was wildly overpriced. This one is actually a really strong, um, a really strong value. So I'm going to say it's four glasses on the um, Ankladuk, the travel retail exclusive uh, Bunnehaven. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure that you uh, subscribe. You can press this button right here to do so. You won't miss any more of the uh, videos that we have coming as we begin year two.